How's it going, Eliminators? Today, I'm gonna to be showing you the importance of lubricating your snowblower's drive axles. So let's get right into it. So in front of us today, we have a Craftsman 8 horsepower, 25 inch snowblower. You guys can see that this thing looks pretty good for how old of a snowblower it is. And that's because we've just about fully refurbished this thing. So I'll put a picture up on screen of what this snowblower looked like before. You can see the old darker Craftsman silver paint that was on it. Also the tires with chains, they didn't hold air. This thing was a big mess and we went ahead and basically refurbished it into what you see here today. So we've gone ahead and painted it with a nice silver, gone ahead and painted all the black spots like the chute and the handles up here. You're also going to notice that we have some modern snowblower tires on this machine. We got those from Stens. These tires are awesome. We have new pins on the axle and getting to the purpose of this video, we also have a new drive axle and drive gear installed on this machine. And I'll get into that in a little bit. We've gone ahead and installed new skitter shoes up front, as well as Kevlar drive and auger belt, new bearings, new axle bushings, new friction wheel, and a full engine service, including a carb oil change, spark plug, you name it, we've done it to this machine. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip this snowblower up on the front end, remove the access panel, and I'll show you guys what the underside of this snowblower looks like. So for an older snowblower, you guys are gonna notice right away that this thing looks fairly new underneath. And like I said, that's because we've gone ahead and replaced the drive axle as well as the drive gear. The friction wheel is new. All the bushings and bearings are new as well, which leads me into why it's so important to lubricate your drive axles where your wheels hook up to the axle. Now, when we first picked this machine up, the main issue was that it didn't drive. And that's because the teeth on the OEM plastic drive gear were completely stripped off on one side. So in order to remove that, these gears you can see are bolted and that bolt goes through the drive shaft here. So ideally you have to remove at least one wheel and the bolt from the gear so that you can take the seized wheel, if you have a seized wheel, and the rest of the axle out. In the case of this machine, not only was the gear stripped, but both wheels were seized to the axle. So how did we fix that? Well, a lot of times you can take a torch to the outside of the wheel and try to heat this up to expand the wheel and maybe break it loose. But depending on the amount of corrosion, no amount of heat or penetrating lubricant will be able to free up these wheels. So because in our case, both wheels were seized to the axle, we were left with no choice other than to cut the axle in half and remove it that way. So cutting the axle in half down the middle was the only way to pull out both halves and then get the OEM plastic gear off. Now, why did the plastic gear end up having that damage in the first place? Well, that all leads to these little axle bushings here. A lot of times you're gonna have plastic axle bushings. And what happens to those bushings is they wear out and they become ovaled. So right now, there is no play in this axle if I move that up and down. And same thing with this one, if I lift that up and down, there's no play. What happens is once these start to wear, they get ovaled to the point where you can physically move this tire up and down. Because you have to remember that gravity is pushing everything down. So these bushings always wear on the bottom side, which creates an oval this way. So what happens is your wheel moves up and down. Now, as the wheels and the axle are moving up and down, that is also affecting the gear here because the gear is attached to the axle. So what ends up happening is right now, we have a nice tight fit in between these two gears right there. So once your bushings start to get worn and that axle has play in it, the teeth of these gears will no longer line up. They're going to end up getting on an angle. So that bushing wears more, there's going to be more of a gap in between those gears and the teeth end up wearing off and you have to replace the gear. Now, replacing the gear in a perfect world should be super simple. Like I said, you're gonna undo that bolt, you can take your tires off, you can slide the axle straight out. But what happens is because this is a snowblower, it's running in a very wet 
environment, corrosion is going to occur. Rust is going to happen. And it just completely ruins your day if you're a mechanic like me because the whole system gets seized. And like I said, there's no other choice other than to cut the axle in half. Now we were able to punch the axles out using a press. So we were able to save the wheels themselves. And like I said, we went to Stens for these brand new tires. These are awesome. However, going back to this gear here, you can't buy the plastic gears anymore. So they discontinued them because they had these issues of the teeth stripping. So you have to buy the new gear, which is a 6215 MA. That's a Murray gear and it's made and sold by Briggs and Stratton. My cost for this gear when I purchased it was $75 and it listed for $85. They have since raised my cost to $80 and the customer's MSRP now is I believe $90. So again, still a $10 markup. And furthermore, I always quote extra hours on this job because I know how much of a hassle it can be if you have to go ahead and replace this axle here. Because I believe this axle also cost me $35. And you know now you're getting into replacing the axle, replacing the gear. We had to replace the bolt as well. We went ahead and had to use the press to press the axles out of the wheels. Sometimes you can't. Sometimes no amount of you know torching or penetrating lubricant will be able to free up those axles. They'll be rusted so solid. So I just wanted to show you the reality of, you know, what happens if you don't simply just lubricate your drive axles because the bushings push themselves in from the outside. So there's a bigger end on the outside there and they go from the outside in. So in order to replace that, you have to pull the wheel off. So once you pull your pin, provided you have some lubricant on that axle, you should be able to just go ahead and pull off the wheel. Look how simple that was, right? It just came off. We didn't need to force it. We didn't use any penetrating oil and we didn't need to use a torch. And that's because we use Permatex nickel anti-seize on our drive axles to lubricate them and prevent them from corroding and you know, basically just seizing solid. Now you don't have to use Permatex nickel anti-seize. Any type of anti-seize will work great. However, a big shout out goes to Permatex for sending these products my way. I use nickel anti-seize in pretty much every one of my videos. You guys are always seeing me use it on bearings, axles, even bolts under here for your access panel. I mean, what you're gonna find with me is that I work on a lot of my customers' equipment every year, so they always bring it back to me for servicing. And I find that it makes my life a lot easier the following year if these bolts have a little bit of nickel anti-seize on them, they come right out. You know, I don't have to worry about breaking off one of these bolts because they're completely seized, which I've done before. And again, it's just more work that you're creating. So by using a little bit of nickel anti-seize on things, you see right there, the wheel just slides right off. And as long as you do that every year, maybe even a couple times a year for how inexpensive this stuff is, you can slather it on there. You know, you don't have to be shy with this stuff. This is 100% preventative maintenance, guys. And it just makes things so much easier. And lubricating the drive axles also brings me back to the one video I did on how to service a snowblower. And I had mentioned in the video that I service this snowblower every year. And people People kind of called me out on that because they said, well, I showed that one of the wheels was seized. So I reiterated the importance of making sure that the other wheel didn't seize. Then the whole axle could be pulled out via the seized wheel. And I just wanted to touch base on that and mention that while I do service my customer's equipment, you know, pretty much annually, a lot of my customers return, I'm going to say the vast majority of them come back to me every year for service. I don't always service that equipment you know, from the day that they buy it. So what I had failed to mention was the one wheel on my customer snowblower there on the Toro, I believe it was, was already seized. So again, that's why you always want to make sure that at least one of your wheels is nice and free and comes right off. Because again, you know, if you properly lubricate things, but one wheel is already seized and you don't want to have to go ahead and sacrifice a wheel, you know, by taking a torch to it and possibly warping something or putting a puller behind it. And again, possibly warping a wheel. You can always remove the whole axle from one side as long as one wheel comes off. So if you can't do both, make sure you always focus on one and, you know, it just saves you so much aggravation and, not to mention cost of replacing all the components. 
that you wouldn't normally have to replace had you have used nickel anti-seize in the first place. And going back to the video that I posted on what to look for when purchasing a used snowblower, a lot of times you're gonna show up and the snowblower will be in this position, so it'll be on its wheels. To check to see if those axle bushings are worn, all you have to do is come up to the handle here and just lift up on the back of the machine. And if you see that wheel wobbling or you see that whole wheel and axle assembly moving up and down, then chances are you have some worn axle bushings. And basically you're just feeling for the play in that bushing because you have to remember that all of this starts from the drive bushings there or the axle bushings getting worn out. And they're so inexpensive. Those bushings, I think, you know, cost anywhere from about four to maybe $8 each. So you could have $8 in parts and prevent yourself from having to replace a drive gear. And if your wheels are seized, you're gonna have to cut the axle and now you're gonna have the cost of an axle as well. Or maybe even, like I said, have to go ahead and buy new wheels. So you're gonna end up scrapping a snowblower for something that could have been easily prevented by just going ahead and lubricating your drive axles. So that's gonna be it for today's video. Like I said so many times, for how inexpensive the Nick Lanny Seize is, Make sure you're lubricating your drive axles so that it prevents your wheels from seizing to the axle. That then allows you to remove the wheels to go ahead and replace your drive bushings or your axle bushings, which again are relatively inexpensive and can prevent a lot of damage from happening simply by doing a little bit of preventative maintenance. But with that being said, if you guys enjoyed the video, think about leaving me a thumbs up. You know, it really helps me out. You can click here to subscribe and click over here to watch one of my previous videos. I upload every single week, so be sure to stop by, check the channel out for new content, and as always, guys, thanks for watching.